Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Chris Nielsen is training us on how to become magnetic communicators by using proven improv skills. Chris, I've got a few questions that will help us get to know you as a person. Yes. Now, I, I understand you have got one daughter. Yes, and, uh, Michaela Nielsen. Michaela Nielsen, all right. Yes. Uh, what is the biggest letter, uh, biggest lesson that your daughter has taught you? It was, uh, actually it was an easy one for me to learn because of who was teaching it. She was teaching me and she really took me from, you know, more selfish love to an unconditional love. That was the lesson she taught me. Okay, was there one incident that, uh, that triggered yeah. this lesson? She was born, <laughs> but I tell this story. When she was born, it was a C-section and she was put in an oxygen tent. And when I was sitting next to the tent, I was watching her and a, a friendly nurse walked by and she said, you know, you can reach in and touch your daughter. And as I reached under the tent and I was reaching my hand in, she reached up and grabbed my finger. And from that moment, I knew I was hers. Wow, that's a touching story. You can tell that at her wedding. Just embarrassed, embarrassed the heck out of her. <laughs> She's heard that before. And yeah, it might embarrass her. <laughs> Question number two. What is your favorite way of relaxing? Right now, it's bicycling. Okay. And uh, do you have an alternative to bicycling? Yes. It's normally basketball, but I have not played basketball in over a year. Okay. Improv is a, a play. It, it brings more a play in there, but the getting on a bicycle, and especially right now in Surprise, Arizona, where I'm at, with the orange blossoms in the air, it is magic when you are just floating through the air on a bicycle. Beautiful. Okay, my last question. Uh, what is one of your favorite quotes and why? It's a favorite now. I kind of, a, I didn't like it in the past because it was be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs> in the past, I wanted the whole world to change for me. Can you please just change to make me happy? But I found it is probably easier to change yourself than change the rest of the world. Okay, beautiful. Uh, participants, would you please type your questions into the chat and I'll pose them to Chris during his training. Uh, you're going to be sent a link to the recording of this talk in a few hours, ideally before 10 p.m. my time. But I nevertheless encourage you to take notes because the very act of taking notes is going to increase what you absorb by as much as 30%. Chris, are you ready to rock the stage and wow us? I am ready. We'll see who's wowed. <laughs> then, then you take it away. She's all yours. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for having me here. And there is a secret to become a magnet. You've got to take iron supplements. <laughs> and then it's everything's attracted to you. You've got to polarize those iron supplements, but then it's attracted to you. But actually being in good shape, being energetic does help to become magnetic. And who would say, in, in, I'm gonna empower you all right away because I'm really here to serve you. You are now all emperors and empresses. And as you feel that power running through your spine out into the top of your head, you feel this incredible power within you. And as the emperor or empress, thumbs up means you like it, Thumbs sideways, you know, you're not so sure. Thumbs down, no, nope, I don't agree with you. Don't think it's true. Two thumbs up, you love it. And if you want to cut my head off, two thumbs down. Now, if I see you cut my head off, and I might not see you because it's a big gallery, um, let me know, and I probably want to address that <laughs> because I do love feedback. And what I'll share a little bit, how I went from a fearful speaker to one that now has a ton of fun. My favorite part in the past when speaking, when I got to sit down after I spoke. <laughs> so that was the first time I could actually relax. Now it's usually during because of one key thing 
that are going to share in the recipe that improv teaches, teaches a bunch of C's, communication, collaboration, charisma, connection, creativity. It brings all those into your life if you want them. This proven recipe works all over the place. You watch so many talk show hosts that are very charismatic. They use the recipe and made them more charismatic. And I'm going to share that with you. And the more people you can draw to you, the better. And let me sit and let me ask this. If I was chasing you, what would you do? Run away. Run away. <laughs> so a lot of people's marketing is actually chase marketing. I want to catch you. Yes, Kate, run. I want to get you. And now for the group, if people can come on camera, I love it because sometimes I love to see your faces and to see this and to test the emperors and empresses out there. If you're willing to come on camera, I would love it to see if you agree with me on this. And improv helped me get to this point. Uh, Tess, were you ready there with your thumbs? I like to be wrong. I like to be wrong. Thanks for that smile, Jason. No, he's shaking his, he, Rogers, give me, oh, Roger, oh, he cut my head off. Roger, come on, you're the host of this thing. I'm gonna have to hold my head the rest of the time now because of that. <laughs> no, th this is, this is, no, I don't like to be wrong. Uh, yeah, okay. I thought you were cutting my head off. Remember that's you're cutting my head off with that one. Um, I used to hate to be wrong. Yeah, and you can put in the chat maybe, what, what, what can we do for signals if you wanna do it? That thumbs up would be yes, thumbs down would be no. We'll do that, Y and N. And so thumbs up if you agree, thumbs down if you don't. What I get is I used to hate to be wrong because if I was wrong about this thing out here that I'm playing with, I was wrong. And that's why I hated to be wrong. I didn't have that awareness until maybe 10 years ago that when I was wrong about this thing, I was wrong. In one of the books I recommend that I did when I did my improv training was the book Mind Mindset by Carol Dweck. The book Mindset by Carol Dweck, D-W-E-C-K. Now I actually like to be wrong because when I'm wrong, I'm not wrong, my beingness isn't wrong. I'm just wrong about this thing. And instead of being wrong, it's just feedback on how to get better. And what I would get out there is if you can bring that into your life, it is powerful. It was like taking a 200 pound backpack off my back and letting that thing go. That's how powerful it was for me. And I'm gonna give you, before I get into the recipe, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my speaking journey so you can see where I came from to be here. Chris, do you, do you want yeah. to spotlight you again? Yeah, you can spotlight me or go even to gallery either way. Um, whatever you feel right, going back and forth to see people's reactions, I'm good with that. So my journey as a speaker, I was programmed as a kid. And let's see, thumbs up if you've been programmed, thumb down if you don't think you've been programmed, why in the chat if you've been programmed, and in, thank you for that, Ingrid. Ingrid, no, she's been programmed. Why from Kate, why from Michelle, excellent. Raise hand, we've been programmed, I think. So I was programmed by a TV commercial. Never let them see you sweat. Roger knows it already. Never let them see you sweat. It was a dry idea commercial. And here's the thing. I sweat a lot. <laughs> I mean, really a lot. The good thing, and, and when I played basketball, people would on my team even that would guard me in practice, I don't want to guard Chris. He sweats a lot. Uh, to people on the other team would go, oh, not Chris. I don't want to guard him. It was an advantage in some cases. Um, I was slippery. I'd slip by him. But it... <laughs> It was not an advantage after hearing that commercial in school. I sweat a lot. And the good thing is no coach ever said, don't sweat so much, Chris. In school, I thought I was defective because I sweat so much. And I was to give a speech in middle school and I was shaking on the way to class. I was sweating on the way to class. I had even sweated the night before thinking about it. As I sat down, I was going, please don't pick me. Please don't pick me. And she did though. She's picking everyone. I stood up. And I poured sweat like I've never poured sweat before. I mean, it was like a monsoon release and sweat just poured down my face. My face went appear red. And in that moment, I just wanted to disappear. I created a voice, uh, a ghost in that moment that haunted me for 30 years. I let this ghost haunt me. For 30 years, it would go, ha ha, I'm here. Every time I get up, you're gonna, fa get, you're gonna fail. You're gonna get rejected and you're gonna feel like you wanna die. And I did some crazy things so you wouldn't see me sweat. And I'm gonna share just a few of them with you. Two shirts, the exact same. <laughs> if I could switch it quick, I'd make the quick switch. 
the other thing I did was um, my first improv show, which was about 10 years ago. I put an ice pack down my pants before the show. And uh, it was, yes, it was an exhilarating experience, but I was afraid then that it would, would fall out or people would see it. <laughs> so I took it out and I did the show without the ice pack. I thought this was kind of brilliant. I, I was really important speech I was about to give. And I half froze a bottle of water. So it was ice frozen on the bottom, like a block of ice, then almost frozen on top, you know, just close to it. As she's introducing me, I put it on the back of my neck and that felt pretty good, but I was still sweating. So I took a huge slug of it. And when I started talking, I could tell my tongue was numb and I was slurring my words. And as I slurred my words, I got all self-conscious and I poured sweat anyways. The, the last one I'll share with you, and thank you for the laughs and smiles. The last one I'll share with you is this. I bought panty liners. Yeah, that's right. Panty liners, you heard it right. I bought panty liners. And of course, for here, right here, you know where you sweat. And I put them in, in practice, I was moving around, feeling good, and no sweat came through. I go, this is gonna be great. I might even have an invention. <laughs> and so I was given my speech, this important speech. I knew I was sweating, but I felt confident because I had my panty liners on. I was ready to go. And then I looked down and there was a big, oh no. And I looked at the other side, oh no. And the rest of the speech, I was like this. Because what happened? Dry panty liner island in a lake of sweat. Perfect outline. Yes, that's right, Roger. Perfect outline. You could see the islands of the panty liner. Perfect outline. And I think I gave a speech about three weeks ago and the lady said, well, why didn't you get uh, heavy flow panty liners? <laughs> and I did never, never thought of that. I never wore panty liners again, um, but that's why I want to share my journey with you because of this. Speaking in front of other people was not always easy for me. It wasn't as fun as it is today. And I'm going to share the recipe of improv. I'm going to give you a question you can use to program yourself that if you ask yourself this question, you're going to, the more you ask it, you're going to become more and more charismatic with it. It is a very simple question that you can use to reprogram yourself. The other thing I want to share is this. I want you to think about this and put this number in the chat. Uh, what would improving your communication skills, just 10%, what would that be worth to you monetarily? Just see if you can put a number in there. If you're open to putting in the chat, put in the chat or just write it down on a piece of paper in front of you. You don't have to share it if you don't want to. What could be improving your communication skills, 10% be worth to you? 20K, thank you for sharing that. Infinity, I'll, that's a huge number. And uh, it could make an incredible difference. And then think about this, even from the, the non-monetary side, 60K. Thank you for that, Alexia. Uh, it could be worth a bunch, 20 to 50% more than 10%. I like that, whatever the number, original number is. Thank you, Kate. What I get is this, improving it at 100K, all right, is one of the most powerful things you can do, one of the most leveraged things you can do, and everyone can do it. Communication is made up of skills. And who agrees with that? Every skill can be improved. And this is a skill if you invest and it can be improved. Give me a thumbs up if you're good with that or a yes in the chat. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Ray. I saw the, the one. Thank you for the yes, Phil. Yes. All right. What I get, and I want to share this recipe with you now and share it how it changed my life. And we'll jump into it. Let me flip around to that screen for you. I might have to quick through a couple other quick ones. Where are we? Uh, don't look at those. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that was fast enough that you didn't see those other ones. So I say this, two words change my life. And they're the two word basis of improv. And I would love to hear any guesses. You can take yourself off mute for a second if you want to yell out the guess. Uh, Angie, you are you yes and? I see that in the chat a lot. And Angie is correct. Yes, and, and I say that in this way, it's a two word basis of improv. I was a no but kind of guy before that, meaning I have a but, but I would say no, but I got a better idea all the time. And I didn't realize how incredibly disconnecting that can be. That when you say no but to someone, you're disconnecting from them so often. And I've done this in rooms full of people and they say, you are a jerk. I was, but I didn't know I was a jerk. 
I actually was unconscious about this habit. Yes, and made me much more connective. And what that means is when your partner brings you an idea in improv, you say yes to that and look to add something positive to that. Like if I say, we're, uh, we're skiing, skiing Whistler today and you go, oh, no, we're not, we're on Zoom. You'd say, yeah, we're skiing Whistler and we're gonna do a black diamond run even though it's your first time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and let's make sure we ski with a ski patrol as well. So it's saying yes and adding something to it. The second one I share this way, I believe, and let's see what the emperors and empress agree with this. I believe it's the number one skill in leadership, the number one skill in sales, the number one skill in negotiation, and the number one skill in uh, relationships as well, I would say. Any guesses what that would be? Listening. Listening, absolutely. Thank you for that. Listening. And thank you for all those in the chat listening. Can you say yes and to someone if you're not listening? Pretty hard to do. The active listening, active listening takes it another level. Matthew, you're jumping ahead of me here. So what I get is this, how do we, the third one in this blank is how do we take listening to a whole nother level? How do we bring listening up a level? Active listening will certainly do it. And I'm looking for something slightly different. Eye contact, eye contact absolutely helps. I mean, that tells you're there with them. Anything else? I'll give you a clue. If you see the, it's a very short word first and then a second word is longer. A empathetic listening absolutely does it. Also listening with the willing, listening with the desire to understand. One CEO shared this with me, his love analogy, L-U-V. Listening with understanding uh, and val listening, understanding and validating. He said an agreement, it's like a, a chocolate sundae with nuts on it. The cherry on the top is the agreement. It's still a great dish even if you just listen to understand and validate. But here, this is the listening that took me to a whole new, new level with improv. It's by being, basically be present. When you're present, it's magic. And it wasn't always that way. And I'll share really fast the story of my first improv class, which was almost the last improv class I was in. They played a game called Pass the Object. And Jackie Lowell, my improv teacher, which is about five foot tall and shrinking, she played improv way back in the day with Whoopi Goldberg. And she, um, she gave our group of about 15 people in this introductory class a white toilet brush. And I could look new, did not have a tag on it though, Jackie, um, and people were turning it into cool things. I could see the butterfly net. I could see her turning it into a butterfly net, a tennis racket, a badminton racket. I could see all these different things. But where was I? I was breathing in the fear zone, barely breathing. And I had nothing coming to me. My vision was tunneling. I was blank, nothing. And that voice comes up, you're gonna fail, you're gonna get rejected and you're gonna die. And later on, I'll actually talk about what I think is the number one fear, modern fear that underlies most modern fears. And if you're aware of it, you can start working on it. But so it is coming around to me and I finally got the idea in my head, canoe paddle. And I could finally take a deep breath. That felt good to find a canoe paddle. <laughs> Ooh, I can breathe now. And then the person right next to me says canoe paddle and hands me this brush. And that voice is like, I told you so. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I was brushing my teeth with a toilet brush. And some people groaned, some people laughed, and I survived. Roger laughed, so thank you for that, Roger. I survived that moment. And from then on, I played improv. Many games were tough for me. And Jackie would ask, what are you saying to yourself that you're not getting up and participating? Failure, rejection, death. <laughs> um, and here's what I get. We're programmed, like I said earlier. We're programmed with stuff that stops us from being charismatic, magnetic, and do the best we can. The other one, I love this. This changed me in improv as well. Make your blank look blank. Make your blank look blank. Love guesses, especially love funny guesses. Um, anyone want to guess what goes in those blanks? Make your face look happy. That's not it. <laughs> Make crap awesome if you're a good bullshitter. Boss happy. Bo making your boss happy. That's close. You're on the right track with that. Uh, smile and look authentic, you know, smiling and authentic. That looks great too. Eyes, make your eyes happy. Yeah. <laughs> or not crazy. Sorry, that was a little crazy. Make your partner look good. Stefan, have you played improv, Stefan? Because that's basically it. Make your part, make your butt small. Do, uh, yeah, cause she, maybe it's, that would be tough sometimes. 
make your body booty, make your booty look big, customer look good. Those are all good ones. I love it. And here's, I'll give it to you. Uh, someone had it earlier. Apologize for not remembering your name. South Authentic. It's make your partner look great. And someone said, make your par uh, partner look good. So make your partner look great. That's what improv did. It's the Im improv is not under undercutting people. It's not about you being personally funny. It's about setting up other people to succeed. And that this formula together, yes, and listen, be present, make your partner look great. How many of people out there can either put a yes in the chat box or give me a thumbs up with this. How many of you would love everyone in your life or almost everyone, I already got a yes to that, thank you, to say yes, and you listen, be present, make you look good. Excellent. Thank you for those thumbs ups. Thank you for the yeses. Thank you for the double thumbs up, Roger. I appreciate that. It's a gift to have that for us. And here's, let's do, woohoo, I like that, woohoo. Here's the, the switch with it. How many of the people in your life would like you to be like that? Thumbs up if you think that's true too. Yeah, thank, thank you for the two thumbs up, Jason. Roger, I can't see your name at the bottom, I apologize. Yes, thank you for the yes in the chat. You bet, everyone, thank you for all those comments. Yeah, people want us to be that way. And here's, here's another powerful question here. Can you be that way? I think the answer is yes, you can be that way. Yes, thank you for the yes, you bet. Um, you can be that way. Now here's, the, the, it's tough. It's not as tough as you think. It's just a habit. And that's really the thing. I, I had the no but habit for years and years and years. It didn't change overnight. So it's just a habit that we can change. And here's how we change it. We put it into practice. And for me, it was playing games. I got in the habit of saying yes to my partner. I got the habit in setting my partner up. My partner got in the habit of setting me up. And that felt so good that this started to become powerful in my life. That's what I want for you. So what is standing in your way is really you. You can do this if you choose. And in a second, I'm gonna show you a slide with these all filled in. You can take a screenshot of it, of it if you want. And well, you can put it in your phone, put a daily reminder how to say yes and a little more, how to listen a little better, how to be present, how to make people look good or look great. And your partner, who are your partners in this game? For me, you are my partner right now tonight. You're my audience. I'm gonna bring the wisdom of this incredible room into there. Make my partner look good. There's incredible wisdom out here. It is an honor to be here with you. And I actually do this. I love my audience. That wasn't always the case though. <laughs> that, that was me stretching into that as well. So make your partner look good. It could be your spouse, could be your significant other, could be your friend, could be your coworker, could you be your boss, as you said earlier, could be all those things that you can help look better. Now the, this last one, or not the last one now, I added a sixth one, dare to blank. This is really key if you wanna succeed at a big level. And Jackie Lowell shared it this way with me. And you feel free to put guesses in the chat. Dare to believe, I like that. Dare to fail, dare to fall, dare to try. Those are good and they're very, very close. Leap change, I love that. She said, Chris, this is the secret to success in improv in life. Dare to lead, I love that as well. Here's what she said. Dare to suck. And I'll say that again, dare to suck. And when she said that to me, you know what I did? Thank you for the laughter, Gwyneth. I said, no, thank you. Um, uh, I had that very critical mind in my head, very critical thoughts spinning around in there. I said, no, thank you. That's not for me. But the person next to me were giddy, like shaking their head. Yeah, that's awesome. And the person here was almost like floating out of their seat. And I'm going, no, please let it be something else. But that's what it is. And what I realized as a kid, one of my heroes was um, Michael Jordan. And he had the, the famous quote, the reason I succeed is I failed over and over again. And what I get is this, and, and I'll share the brief story to demonstrate it. People intellectually know failure leads to success. People don't own it. I did not own it. And I'll give you an example. I was lucky to speak to a group of about 75 executives in San Diego County. Some of them own billion dollar companies. And when I, walk, when I danced into the room to Justin Timberlake, can't stop the feeling, and I'm not a great dancer, <laughs> but I danced in, down the stairs in the stadium seating, on the wall was the title of my talk, my keynote was Dare to Suck. 
that title was right there on the huge screen. And I, I was inviting everyone, come on, get up and dance with me. Come on and getting up and dance with me. Any guesses how many people got up to dance? <laughs> good guess. Jason's got it pretty much. I'll give two. One is very good too. Zero, Roger's very close as well. Jason, I think you're right. It's almost like one and a half. The, the MC of the event got up with about 30 seconds to go. Um, the, the, basically the event, the one who ran, ran the event or owned the event, he got up with about five seconds left in the song. <laughs> and when, when the people got up, I just pointed to the thing on the wall, dare to suck. I go, why didn't you get up? Why did, what's the title of my talk? Why didn't you get up? Why wouldn't you risk? And about a dozen people came up to me afterwards and said, I was just about to get up. <laughs> and again, the, the powerful thing is this, and it, I, the reason I knew it is for me as well. We know failure leads to success, but we do not own it. And owning it makes a difference. And improv, this thing helped me own it. The last one I share in this way, risk takers are courageous. Yes, Gwyneth. Um, the last one I share this way, this was listed as the number one factor in high-performing teams by Google's Project Aristotle, the number one factor in high-performing teams. Any guesses what that is? And I do, I say it slightly different, create a blank, blank. Teamwork, yeah, this was actually to create teamwork. This factor led to creating great teamwork in the high-performing teams. And I'll just create a team dynamic, dare to fail, all those work. I'll just give it to you here. You can Google it whenever you want. It's create a psychological safety. I say this, create a safe environment. So how can you dare to fail if you haven't created a safe environment? You gotta create a safe environment to play. So I'm gonna switch the screen so it's all filled in. So you can see in those crazy note takers out there who want to see it. I'll put it right there and I'll, Duck down to the side so you can take a screenshot if you want. And it's yes and, listen, be present, make your people look great, dare to suck, create a safe environment. If you do that, you can make magic happen. And magic doesn't happen overnight. It's like building a habit. You gotta build this into yes and didn't always build into me right away. I sure this, this was all in a powerful way. And I wanna, demonstrate this game a little bit with you and i open it up ask me a question you think i'd have to say no to and i'll see if i can give my version of yes ending it ask me a question you think i'd have to say no to and let's see yes jason chris may i have a million dollar check tomorrow absolutely jason i like the specifics of it too i usually don't get tomorrow Yes, just help me make two million <laughs> by tomorrow. I'll put your same deadline on it and happy to give you a million dollar check. Great question. Do you really brush your teeth with a toilet brush? I really did that night, but not very hard. Strip, oh, KK, I can't believe you're gonna make me do this. Jeez, no, <laughs> I'll strip in my head, KK. <laughs> so thank you. I actually just took, because you said that, I'm taking my pants off right now. Um, you will not see. Will you stop talking? Yes. Will Will you uh, encourage your daughter to have more sugar? Michaela, eat more sugar. You You can end the session now. If you're not getting any value, you can end the session right now. Yeah, that, that's possible. We can do that. I'm 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 open. If you're getting value, though, why don't you give me a thumbs up or a two thumbs up or put a yes in the chat? Yes. Thank you for that. Okay. I missed that one, of course. Thank you for that. Can you sell ice to Eskimos? I bet you some ice, I bet you I could. Certain flavored ice. I'm sure they like flavored ice in the summertime. <laughs> Can you finish talking right now? <laughs> they went to the waiting room. <laughs> Roger saw it. I think Roger was the only one that saw it. I said, I'm going to mime, I'll mime the rest of the presentation. And Roger goes, no, you're not going to mime the rest of this presentation. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. That would be tough to do. Um, great questions. I've never got that one. 
can you stop talking right now? I did stop talking, but not for the rest of the presentation. So thank you for that. But you know, yes and is not, I'll tell you a short story from one of the favorite places I get to work. Can, I, can you stop breathing? I'll do that too. <laughs> thank you for that question as well. I'll share a, sh a sh short story from working with Alzheimer's San Diego. And we work with caregivers that are teaching these principles. Yes, and listen, be present, make your people look great. Um, dare to risk, create a safe environment. And really it's the yes, and listen, be present and make your people look great is what we focus on there. And we help caregivers connect with their people. And that's one of my compass questions that you can use to reprogram yourself is, am I connecting in this moment or am I disconnecting? When you're connecting, people wanna go the extra mile or 10 miles for you. I teach this to leaders all the time. Those leaders that disconnect from people, they have to work twice as hard or 10 times as hard because when we're disconnected, people might not even do what we're asking them to do. When they're connected, magic happens. It's like trying to vacuum without a vacuum cleaner plugged in. That's the disconnection. That's how good it works. Plugging the vacuum in makes it work so much better. But at Alzheimer's San Diego, this is a great story of the advantage of yes and. A granddaughter shared this with all of us. Her grandmother has Lewy body syndrome, meaning she sees visual hallucinations, things that aren't there. And they would constantly get in a fight because grandma would see things outside, people outside that weren't there, people in the granddaughter's car. And sometimes the granddaughter actually grabbed her by the hand, pulled her outside, opened the car doors and see grandma, there's no one in there. There's no one in there. They just clashed. And it was a difficult relationship that way. After learning yes and, here's what she did. They were at the sink one night and the grandmother said, washing dishes, looking out the window. And the grandmother said, oh my gosh, there's a gorilla in your car. And the granddaughter said, yeah, that's my boyfriend. And the grandmother looks back with, with confusion. He goes, oh, he likes wearing gorilla costumes. And the grandmother looks back again with a little bit, but they both started laughing and they connected instead of disconnected and thought about it. That's the power of yes and. Um, one, one guy in a, a group I was doing out in Palm Springs asked me, he said, you couldn't say yes to this. He has a 16 year old son. The son already has a drinking problem and he just got his driver's license. He said, if my son asked for the car keys, you couldn't say yes and to that. And you'll see my, my answer. It's not a full yes and, but it's not a no. And here's, here was the answer that came to me. Son, I could see how you'd want to drive in that condition. I hope you know how much I love and care about you. I also know how much you care about other human beings. And I know you'd hate to hurt someone. And that's not flipping them the car keys. Yes, flipping the car keys. But it's really saying yes to them as a person. Yes to them as a person. And it's really powerful. I'd love to hear in the chat what you got out of me sharing this, this recipe today and how you could utilize it in your, in your personal life. And if there's anyone that wants to volunteer, to play a yes and story with me, you're welcome to volunteer and may, maybe Roger can spotlight us. If, if there's not enough people that volunteer, I'll skip on to another exercise that I'll do as well and share from there. So put in the chat if you can, or even come off mute and share, what have you gotten from this and how can you use it? I would love to hear. And as you do that, um, I'd love to hear from anyone. And if you don't wanna share, you don't have to. And I not going to stop breathing. Hi, Dana. Or is it Daya? Daya. Yes, Daya. Remember Roger Papaya? Yes, indeed. Daya, <laughs> Daya Roger Papaya. It's, uh, you have to practice yes and yes, you do. It's recognize the moment you say no, you disconnect, right? This will help keynotes and anxiety. Really helps my anxiety with it as well um, because you're more flexible on stage when someone makes a mistake you can deal with that mistake. It creates a positive flow. A couple of psychologists actually said no is the most dangerous word in the world. Mm -hmm. They just flashed the word no on a screen and about a dozen stress producing chemicals were pr produced in the body. They went into fight, flight, or freeze. Um, I see things in a new light, a way to a healthy and fun communication. Yes. And here's a big question. How many of you like a playful, fun speaker? Thank you for the thumbs up. Yes. Me too. We're attracted to that. That's very attractive. Recipes for good vibration. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Me, me, me. Ah, yes. Flows. 
The, Chris, it feels Chris, good. Uh, to be Chris, playful. you and Daya are co-spotlighted. Yeah. You Is there anyone that? else that wants to volunteer? Uh, Roger, do you want to jump in with this, or do you want to find me one more volunteer for this? Oh, I'm certain somebody of the 62 people who are here would like to co-volunteer. Come on up. Come on and play. Put, put your hand up, and I'll uh, spotlight you. Yeah, raise your hand, and you get spotlight, and come on stage and, and play with me here. This is the time to dare to suck, right? So, Jay right, <laughs> Daya Papaya. <laughs> Thank you, Daya. <clears throat> So you've got Jason and uh, Daya as in papaya. <laughs> thank you, Daya, and thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason, for the great smiles during this and listening so intently. It is awesome when your audience gives you that kind of energy and feedback. You've been a great audience. Um, in this game, we're just going to play yes and story. It's a simple game we play. And we'll just use a line or two or a phrase. And it basically, I'll give you an example of it. I go, once upon a time, there was uh, um, an elephant named Ellie. She loved to do this. And then you say to that, yes, and, and add something to that. And first we'll get from the audience and just, it can only be, it might be just a phrase or a line. Don't feel like you need to elaborate. And we'll go around and we will create this story together. And this will be a story that only happens here and we'll go probably no further. But any, let's get a suggestion in the chat. What's a suggestion for our hero of this story? What kind of hero do we want? The chat, people are thinking about it. They're coming up with something really good and really friendly. A shark and Spider-Man is what I see. Thank you for those suggestions. I think we can go with that. Siamese twin dolphins. Okay, no more, no more suggestions because they'll keep popping up and distract me. So we're gonna go with the shark, Spider-Man and maybe work in Siamese twin dolphins. We don't have to, <clears throat> but let's start. Once upon a time, there was a shark named Sammy. He loved his family and it will go to Daya and then Jason and back to me. So Daya, you say yes and, and you just add something to that. He loved his family, uh, yes, and he was the best big brother ever. Yes, he was. The shark named Sammy loved his big brother and he also loved his new sister on the way. They, they totally loved each other, it was a tight-knit family. They were ready to experience the wild. Yes, Daya. and they and they went on a long journey in the ocean to a warm place where there was lots of wonderful things to chase. While they were on this uh, warm, while they were traveling in this ocean, they were going to Hawaii where they wanted to explore the whole area to capture all those big fish. Yes, and they saw so many amazing fish that they'd never seen before. In fact, one fish they saw was a Siamese dolphin. Yes, and they were so surprised to see the Siamese dolphin that they said, would you like to join our family and go on a trip with us? We're having a great adventure. They couldn't believe after meeting a Siamese dolphin, they also <laughs> wanted to go explore the rest of the world together and find out if there are any more Siamese dolphins. Yes, they were so excited to explore the world. They came up near the surface, near a big city, and they on a side of a building, was a man who was kind of had like a spider web on his back. <laughs> yes, and they thought, hmm, that's a very good idea. Maybe if we had a web on our back, we could go even farther in the ocean and out of the ocean. Yes, and they realized when they could get a web on their back, they would be able to start to walk on land. And every day they tried to get a, more and more of a web. Yes, and this got news. There was on all the news stations and Spider-Man heard about this and went down to the ocean to see them. And he said, you know, you're not meant to be on land. Why don't you go back in the ocean and I'll hit my spider webs on you and ride you. Yes, and they said that would be a really great idea. And we would love to be on land for a little while longer so people can see that we are really good animals and, and have good hearts and love people. Yes, they spent a little bit more time on land but they knew that their home was in the ocean so they can explore more places. Yes, and these dolphins turned out to be ambassadors, these sharks turned out to be ambassadors for all sharks. And so people were now kinder to sharks and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> great, great job, great job, Daya and Jason. Thank you so much for playing in this. How did it feel playing that game? 
always fun. I love improv and I haven't done it in a very long time. And I definitely felt that you have to really listen to the person prior to you to really fill in the rest of the story. Absolutely. Thank you for that applause out there in the bravos in the, the chat. Thank you both for playing with me. Thanks. It makes a difference. That's a story I could have never told by myself. And it, you know, it might not end in the commercial store, but that there's amazing power to what you can do with yes and. And I want to do this depending on the time, and we may not get to it, but I want you to think about in your business, maybe around communication, your personal communication or marketing you're doing. We might do yes and brainstorming if we have a little bit of time in the end. But I want you to remember this formula, and I want to share another version of it. Becoming a great storyteller is a huge make is a huge difference maker. One of the things I did for myself is use this formula to have fun. I, I knew I knew this is the thing I could do and have total fun at it. As a speaker, I'm a professional speaker and trainer. I always wanted to get better at my craft, but by myself, often this would happen. I was about to work on my speech by myself or as a speaker working on some skills like storytelling, creating a mystery or using metaphors or using my senses. I was getting ready to practice and then I felt a little bit hungry. And so I decided, no, just before I work on the speech, I'm gonna go to the kitchen and I got myself an orange. And I peeled my orange and I ate the orange. And then, you know, I'm still a little bit hungry. Get a bowl of cereal, eat my bowl of cereal. You know what? Let's get some inspiration. I'll turn on YouTube. And then five hours later, I was still there. <laughs> Didn't do anything. What I looked at this is it's kind of like creating a safe environment. I was lying in bed and trying to figure out how to do this for me. I have no issue going to play basketball. I've never said, I don't want to play basketball today. I said, oh my gosh, I get to play basketball today. So here's the key and you can use it anywhere in your life. I decided to create an environment of inevitable success. That means I decided to create an environment where success was guaranteed. But I added one word to it that made the difference for me. The word that I needed to add to it. Create a playful environment of inevitable success. And that's where I started Speaker Skills Plus. I created on Zoom before this pandemic. And the idea was to play speaking games with my fellow speakers, creating a mystery. And some of the great mysteries you can do, mysteries work in marketing. You can see some of the mysteries I've used by filling in the blank here, even saying that one word that, that made all the difference, playful. All those things can make a difference in your marketing, your speaking. It's like the great stories. You open a book and you're hooked from the first page and you've got to read till the end or you're in a Netflix series and it ends and you go, oh no, I gotta watch the next one. Oh no, I'm watching this whole series until it's done. That's why I look at before I watch a Netflix show, how many seasons are in the show. And if it's too many seasons, I just say, I can't do it, it's too risky. So I created a playful environment of inevitable success called Speaker Skills Plus. And you're welcome to test, go on a test drive with me, Get, take a golden ticket and play with me if you wanna check it out. And that's where we create mysteries, metaphors, analogies. Uh, we talk about bringing our senses into it, how it feels, how it tastes, bringing all those things into in a playful way in our storytelling skills to grow our storytelling ability so we can hook in our audience and do it with our marketing, do it with storytelling and bring people in. I decided to, to create a playful environment. I love it. I want to hear more, Laura, Barbara. So environment, OG, inevitable Guaranteed basically means I like that. So here I want to share a, another formula that we use in that, that you can use actually for your marketing. Here we go, let's switch this up. And all right. And there's a microphone out there. Everyone here that's uh, is, Roger said is an entrepreneur in some way. You are all spokespeople for your business. It's time to pick up that microphone and get better at your communication skills. We talked about the 10% and what a difference that would make. It's gonna bring so much more money and time and effort. It'll reduce for you. It'll make you better connected with the people you love and care about. And let me get to, why do I put a dog up there? Aren't dogs charismatic? <laughs> they're playful, they're energetic, they're happy. They make a difference. Let me get down to this recipe that I want to share with you. This is a Pixar story formula. Everyone heard of Pixar and what they do? 
they create systematically create great stories that are usually blockbuster success. I think their success rate is over 90%. Yes, they're loved. I'm sure that was uh, Jorge talking about the, the dogs. And, and this is the formula. And I'll give an idea formula with what I did with Speaker Skills Plus in telling my story. And yes, you might take a picture of it and take it down for your own, uh, for, your, for your business. How can you tell a story for your business? So here's my version, and you heard another version of it before. Once upon a time, there was a speaker named Chris. He was a professional speaker, but he wanted to get better at his craft. But he would constantly procrastinate when it comes to working on the skills. Every day he would attempt to work on his skills, and he wouldn't. But one day he had this idea, this idea to create a playful environment of inev inevitable success. So he would go as easily to that as he went to basketball. He created on Zoom, so it'd be easy to go to, no commute. He invited other playful people to it. And because of that, playful people showed up and they played with him. And because of that, they grew their speaking skills together and it felt good and it was fun. Instead of resisting it, they jumped in. Instead of pushing a boulder up a hill, it felt like jumping on a sled and sliding downhill to success. Until finally, they became wow speakers and attracted business towards them. So that's me playing with that formula. Is there anyone out there that wants to play, in that, play with that formula for themselves? Feel free to raise your hand. I'll bring you up here. I'll help you play with that if you want. If you don't, we'll jump to something else. No takers thus far. Chris is looking for a volunteer to apply this formula. And you don't have to, but I will happy to play with it with you and you can talk about your own business with it. So really it is the formula is something that's going on in your life, something that excited you in your everyday routine. But one day something different happened that triggered a, a change of events because of that, because of that, and until finally. And I'll leave it up there. And I'm, right now I'm gonna share the question with you. Someone think about if they wanna dare to suck. Um, share, share the question with you that actually I'm using on a daily basis to reprogram me. Here's the question. Am I coming from abundance or scarcity? Am I coming from abundance or scarcity? And often my first answer is a scarce answer. And when I'm aware of that, I get to change that answer in me to a much more abundant answer. Who put a yes in the chat or put a thumbs up if you see how that question could reprogram you. Thank you for that. And I'll tell you a quick story of a CEO I shared, I shared this with in Riverside County. She shared with me, as I shared that question, yes, sir, thank you for that. As she shared it, in, um, when I shared that question, she goes, oh my gosh, Chris, you just brought back something for me. I was feeling all abundant. And when you're feeling abundant, do you think you're more charismatic? Give me a yes and a thumbs up if you feel more charismatic. Yeah, when you're abundant, when you're around someone that here's all the food, love this food, um, come on into my house, love to share this with you. Absolutely. I love that in there. Thank you for sharing that. And I didn't, absolutely. It's like asking the, the higher self speaking or the lower self. Yes. Great point. Feeling unstoppable, unstoppable feels so good. So this abundance feeling feels good. You are more attractive to other people around you. You are like a magnet. This one question can do that for you. It is powerful. So when I said that, the C in the room goes, oh my gosh, Chris, I was feeling so abundant. Business was just attracted to me. I felt so good. I bought a huge, I felt so good. I bought a huge um, building and I put my company in there. It was way bigger than I needed. And when I got into the new building, I, all of a sudden I felt scarce again and I started acting scarce and business started not come as easy. I need to get back to that abundant feeling that drew, drew it all in to begin with. So that's another huge key you can do in terms of creating abundance in your life, being more charismatic. Just keep reprogramming yourself. And I, I do it on a regular basis. My first answer is often a scarce answer. So that's the second of my compass questions that I call compass questions. The other thing I wanted to share with you is, let's see, what was it here? Um, let's, let's test this program too. And it's another reason around... Uh, why I think, at least in the United States, I don't know. Do you like zombie movies up in Canada for those Canadians on the call? The Canadians like zombie movies, Roger? 
Uh, it, the number of thumbs up says yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Canadians like zombie movies as well. Thank you for that. Um, and some of these zombie movies that you like might not like my theory about it. Here's what I think, and thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down, if you, depending. I think they like zombie movies because at least zombies are a little bit more dead than we are. Did I just say that? <laughs> and and is, who's agreeing with me on that or who's disagreeing with me on that? Lots of, lots of, lots of, huh? What's he talking about? <laughs> What I mean by this is we're not fully alive. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we don't live fully. We're holding ourselves back. All this program, this scarce programming, this deficiency story programming, and it gets to the one point I wanted to make earlier is this, is that um, I think this is the one fear that underlies most modern fears. And I would love to see your guesses. And can you put it, Roger, can you put it in full gallery view? as well so we can see everyone that's on camera. Yeah, there we are. Oh, all these faces. I was having in the other view. Nice to see all of you. That, so who, I wanna guess, you can come off mute. What do you think the fear that stops us from doing improv, that stops us from getting up and doing a game like this in front of other people? What is the fear that underlies all the modern fears? Looking, looking stupid. That's, I, I did not want to look stupid. Judgment, embarrassment, all those, I agree. I think there's a fear that underlies all those. Failure. Michael says fear of failure. I would agree, fear of failure is big, but it underlies that, even underlies rejection. Shame, it underlies that as well, I think a little bit. I won't know the answer. You might know the answer, Barbara. <laughs> Again, I love bad guesses, pride. Any other guesses? Otherwise, I'm gonna give it to you. And you can see if you would agree with me. Again, thumbs up if you agree with me. It is the fear of being inadequate. The fear of being inadequate. Thank you for the two thumbs up, Jason. Anyone else agree or disagree with that? Let's see, thank you for that, Daryl. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you all those for thumbs up. So it's, the big thing is, let's think about it too. And thank you for all the yeses in the chat. That awareness of that can be huge for you. I think we're all equal in our beingness. And we come into this world actually pretty charismatic. And the deficiency stories we're given take away this charisma and this willingness to be bold. And this deficiency story that we're not good enough, that we're inadequate to the situation. Because if you got rejected and you knew you were adequate, you knew you were more than adequate, would you really be worried about a rejection? I'm saying no. Yeah. And now say, say you got, say you failed at something. You just, I came in here and I was a horrible failure, but I knew I was adequate. Would I, would that failure really crush me? No. In the, in the past, it might've really crushed me. Remember I said, I got to speak and go, ha ah, I'm here. I didn't dare fail big because I was worried that I create a second speaking ghost and that I couldn't handle it. And then I might never speak again. I took a stand-up comedy class and I really worked hard on my first stand-up routine. And I was okay. I might've said a few funny things, got a few funny laughs, but I felt okay about it. And then someone invited me, you know, months later, I hadn't practiced at all. I said, do you wanna get up on stage and do a stand-up routine? And I thought to myself, do I? <laughs> um, I don't know if I wanna create a second ghost. And then I go, you know what? I can handle it now. And the keys to me handling it were, where that book mindset that I talked about growing instead of the fixed mindset, when you fail, you're the failure. The growth mindset, failure is just feedback. Doing the improv, the yes and, saying yes and to that. And also this is a key for business people and for life. I think one of the keys to feeling great about life and becoming more charismatic is loving yourself no matter what. An unconditional love for yourself. And I want that for everyone because what I know then, you can more easily take in feedback you know you're not inadequate. You know you're a powerful being up to any, up to the situation. You may fail, but you are, your beingness is powerful. So that made a huge difference for me. So even if you fail at something, if you know you're adequate, a failure is just a stepping stone to learn. It's like being wrong. And we feel inadequate. That's about shame and pride. All those things trigger us to feel inadequate about ourselves. Would you all, would you agree with that? 
and I'll give you a program. I don't does does do Canadians have the Jif peanut butter? J I F F peanut butter. We do. Okay. So, a, so you've, you've you've have the commercial in the past. Choosy mothers choose Jif. A, so think about it. Choosy mothers choose Jif. A forward program that says what about people? I think Ramona's got it. She's saying that if you don't choose Jif, you're not a choosy mother. You're not a good mother. <laughs> I like fake reading lips too. Sometimes in Zoom, um, and what is it? It's, uh, Ramona says, thank you, Chris, that was wonderful. And then she's, ah, shucks, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you, Ramona, for that. Um, choosy mothers choose GIF is basically saying, if you, you're not a, if you don't choose GIF, you're not a choosy mother and you're not a good mother. That's how subtle program is. We're getting this, I'm not good enough program all day long. You know, there's another pandemic going around, but this one's been around forever. So if you don't inoculate yourself against this, you're gonna get hit with this, I'm not good enough program. And the I'm not good enough program shrinks you makes you less magnetic, less charismatic, and less attractive. And you'll start to chase and be needy and people will run from you. But when you feel that abundance in you, people start to come your way and it feels good. So any other thoughts, questions about what I just shared? Anyone have, anyone either want to play Pixar with me or do yes and brainstorming? Or I'll get actually, you know, maybe the easiest one if there's no one to that, Roger. As of someone come up, just one person come up with me. And basically all you have to do is like stories and say the word new choice. And so let's, maybe that's an easier one to get a volunteer for that. All you have to do is go new choice, new choice, and I will change the story. And as we find that person, and then we'll find at least one person for that. I will share this again. I created Speaker Skills Plus to grow my speaking skills. Everyone here is a speaker. And just growing your uh, speaking skills by 10%, what's that worth to you? I'll even tell you what I charge for it. $99 a month. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. My golden ticket, and all you have to do is put in the chat, maybe privately to me or send me an email. It is just say, I want a golden ticket and put your email address, how, you, you can contact, how I can contact you. You can come to some of the times I play those games with other people. It may not be right for you, and that's 100% okay. I feel the sense of abundance. I want to play, and here's the right people. You know you want to grow your communication skills. You like to have fun growing your communication skills, and you like supporting other people. Yay, Ramona. Uh, Ramona, is he going to play? All right. So new choices, the game you want to play? Uh, Chris, just a heads up. Uh, you got 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, Roger. Let's play the game new choice. Can you, um, when you hold up your hand, can you say new choice? New choice. Ah, I can hear you clearly. Excellent. That's going to work. Okay. So, so I'm going to tell a story. And whenever you want me to change a detail of the story, raise your hand and say new choice. And the reason why I ask, you can play this game with your people, with your kids, uh, with your friends, with your work staff, if you have a team, with your partner in business, whatever it is. And it helps you be flexible. And I'll tell a story that I've never told this before. Uh, what I'd like is to give check if you want me to tell Goldilocks, Red Riding Hood, Three Little Pigs. Give me a story you want me to new choice off of. Who has a suggestion for that? Cinderella. Cinder, okay, you give me one that I didn't, Cinderella, which I don't know that well, but I'll do it anyway. Thank you for that <laughs> suggestion. Okay. So once upon a time, there was, a, and, you, and whenever you want, you can go okay. new choice. And you can okay. do it even a couple, couple times in a row if you want, okay. or even three times in a row. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a- New choice. Today, there was a girl born named Cinderella. New choice. She, <laughs> 10 years ago, there was a girl way, New way choice. back. Cinderella just came into being. She just poof, she happened. She was like a celestial being. New choice. Cinderella isn't, wasn't a real name. Her real name was Cindy, but because she got dirty, choice. that was Cindy uh, decided to change New her choice. name. Cinderella. She just put it out there. She became Cinderella. I am Cinderella. She screamed to the top new of the world. She decided that she was going to get new choice so much that she wouldn't even exist. Mm. <laughs> so get, get, give me a little breathing room here. Um, so Cinderella, <laughs> one day Cinderella's father left the house and the new stepmother moved in. And the kids there were not so nice to Cinderella. 
and feel free to new choice me every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> the kids were really nice to Cinderella. They got along completely. It was an amazing, they got along most of the time. Enjoy. <laughs> they never got along, not once. Okay, we can go with that. They, they didn't get along at all, um, but they, but Cinderella was still Enjoy. nice to them. This time Cinderella was mean. She got out, she bought some guns and she said, don't, she didn't buy any guns because that's not a good idea. Just remember that people, it's not a good idea to buy guns. So she said to them, she learned martial arts from the next door neighbor and she popped each one of them in the nose. No, she didn't do that either. She learned the martial arts, but she didn't threaten them. And now they were scared of her. She didn't do that as well. <laughs> she felt great in the world. And one day a prince went by, took her away and they lived happily ever after before I got a new choice again. <laughs> Thank you, Ramona for Thank playing you. with me. Thank you, you. You took it up to difficult level nine. Usually usually when I play this with people, I say the maximum is you can new choice people three times in a row on so something for new people. But yeah. thank you for stretching me, Ramona. Wow. I've, I've never <laughs> imagined uh, Cinderella would be a celestial being or any of that other thing. Um, it was a new good time. What's, say it again. Yes, and it was a good story. And I wanted to keep listening to you. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for bringing it up. Um, what I get from this is you will tell a story. When I put people in partners in this game, one, C one CEO, when I said the game we were going to play, said to me, I'm not playing that stupid game. <laughs> and I said, I promise you will feel, when you come out of it, you will feel more flexible in your communication. You'll feel more nimble. You'll have this incredible experience, maybe because not everyone does. The first time was a struggle for me. The second time I had a glimpse of, oh my gosh, this is a cool game. The third time I had this amazing expansive moment from the creativity. And when this particular CEO came back, he said, oh my gosh, I love that game. Playing that game with you is worth the whole thing. So I, I love playing that particular game with people. It is expansive. And what I get from the lesson, and I'll put that, that back up on the screen, like story structure, creating mysteries, using metaphors, all those can make an incredible difference in what you do. Here we got some mysteries in the background here. Let's see, uh, mystery. And the reason I put this crazy picture in is if doing it with a partner can make a difference in terms of getting in shape, whether it's in shape for speaking, whether it's in shape for working out. So if you don't wanna do it with me, find someone to work out your speaking and communication muscles with work together and let's get back up to the one we want to get to. Where are we? There we are. Here's our recipe for creating magic in your own personal world. Remember what we said again, when we say yes and to people, when we listen, when we're present, that alone is a gift. We, when we add making your people look great, that's even a bigger gift. And if you really want to succeed, dare to suck. Isn't part of charismatic people is they're a little bit bold. They're willing to take risks in life. Give me a thumbs up if you would agree with that. Thank you for those thumbs up or two thumbs up. So dare to take risks, create safe environments for yourself to play, create safe places for your customers or clients to play in, um, do all those things for you. I know we're running close to that time, Roger. Uh, do we have any any questions that are burning out there that anyone would like to ask? Yes, I, I, I would like to ask. Uh, when you apply this formula successfully, I, am, I can only imagine you have wonderful relationships. What comes along and ambushes you to abandon this structure and takes you into a dark place with your relationships? Great question, Roger. And one of the things I say too, if, and Roger triggered me in this, if you wanna be a charismatic connecting person, it's the personal work you do on yourself. So if you have a trigger that triggers you out of it, like I had a conversation with my brother last night and I care about him, but he really triggered me. And I came out of it with that particular conversation. Now I can go back to it easier because I, I've done a lot of work on myself. I wanna be a better human being. So that's what brings me out. And I do go right back into it if I can. And with the self-compassion and self-love, I make a lot of mistakes. I'm still very much a work in progress. Um, I forgive myself now much more easily when I make a mistake. Because when I was a kid, my dad was constantly critical of me. And I never felt like enough in his eyes. 
even though today I know he, he totally loves me. But in his eyes, I didn't feel good enough. And I internalized that. Playing with other people, wonderful people helped me change that. And bringing the self-compassion in made a difference as well. So I do my best to connect with people as best I can. And when I get out of that and I get pulled out of that occasionally, I know I'm triggered and I'll allow myself to come back in. Did that answer that question, Roger? Yes, it did. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Happy to answer anything for anyone there. I, I speak to a lot of cool teams. Like one of the things I learned speaking to Microsoft, I like changing your environment. They don't use the word feedback anymore at Microsoft. They don't use the word feedback because it was such a heavy trigger on that word. They use the word perspective instead. Pers what's your perspective? Because words trigger us. The words we use matter. And then I also like this. I like to program people to not get triggered by words as I'm triggering, um, programming, programming myself in that as well. Any other questions, thoughts? No, no further feelings? questions. If you could just uh, move towards conclusion, that would be wonderful. Well, let's wrap this baby in a bow. Everyone can grow their skills as a speaker. Everyone can do it. They're just skills. Doesn't mean, and here's the other thing. You don't have to become me or Roger or Tony Robbins or anyone else. Be the best you you can be. And if you strip down some of these crazy scarcity programs off yourself, if you adopt this recipe that leads to magic, you will have more fun. You will get more playful. It did that for me. It creates magic in your life. If you don't, if you wanna grow your speaking skills, find a, a Toastmaster club to join, find a great organization to join, find a partner that wants to grow them too, so you can push yourself to greater speaking communication success. Remember all the numbers you put in for 10%. What 10% growing your communication skills would be worth? And let me ask the question, how many got an idea that they know is gonna grow their speaking skills today by more than 1%? How many got that today from me, just today? Give me a thumbs up of that. Excellent, thank you, for th thank you for the two thumbs up out there. Thank you all for that. This can grow your skills. I, that was my goal today is give you enough that you could have your own skills, even just the insights, take it up at least 1%. Come play with me if, you, if that feels right. If it doesn't, find someone to train with and play with. Again, maybe send me a private message, send it to the email on my thing, or actually even my phone number is up there. Um, Chris at chrisnielsen.com or Chris Nielsen at Hotmail. Say, I would like a golden ticket to test ride your Speaker Skills Plus. Because Speaker Skills Plus is not pushing the boulder up the speaking success hill. It's like getting on a sled and sliding downhill. Woo! It is a fun, fun ride. Thank you, Fred, for that saying that. And thank you, Roger, for having me uh, to be here to uh, this amazing group. Thank you, Roger. Thank Chris you, audience. Having you was a pleasure. Uh, on behalf of uh, EIN 76-ish thousand members, uh, you've just given us all uh, a, literally a golden ticket to improve our relationships with a couple of very simple formulas. And I certainly am going to hang on to the yes and and do way more, way less of the buts the, the I'm a yes and guy, not a but guy now. Thanks to you, Chris. <laughs> we appreciate it very, very much.